Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today's our topic is uh, DC to DC converter. Uh, we will do some problems on that. So, uh, our course is Power Electronics. Already we have uh, covered the topic DC to DC converters, uh, in which we have discussed uh, some of the converters uh, like buck converter, boost converter, flyback converter, and forward converter. So converter are actually uh, those types of converter which actually transform or convert power from DC to DC. Uh, so these type of converters are called uh, DC to DC converters. They are also called choppers. Uh, we have covered this topic in the previous lecture. Uh, so today we will go through some of the problems uh, related to these converter uh, that uh, this is our today's object. So this will be converter related problem. Uh, so we will go through uh, we will go through this in today's lecture. So this is the first example uh, in the figure that is actually shown. Uh, the switching frequency is 25 hertz and the turn on time T on is 3 millisecond. If the average value of the output current is 40 ampere, determine the average source current. So what we are actually given, we have we are given with the switching frequency, the on time, and the average output current. Uh, these are known to us. What we have to find, we have to find the average source current. Actually, it's a type of converter uh, that actually uh, convert one form to, uh, one power to the other form. So what we have to do is, first of all, uh, we know the equation that the input current or is equal to d into i naught, where d is the duty time or duty ratio. Uh, it, uh, it's also equal to the on time divided by on plus off time. So d can also be defined as the turn on time divided by turn on plus turn off time. So replace this uh, duty d with uh, this. Uh, so what we will get, we will get the input current equal to t on divided by t on plus t off multiply by the output current. So uh, if we arrange this equation, uh, it can also be uh, the T on divided by T plus I naught, where T on plus T off is actually the total time uh, in which uh, the total turn, the total time will consist on the on time and the off time for how much the switch is on and for how much is the switch is off. Uh, if you suppose that the on time is three millisecond and the off time is seven millisecond, then the total width or the total duration of the switching is uh, one milli or uh, ten millisecond. So T is actually equal to T on plus T off. Uh, we can also rearrange that uh, the one over T is also equal to the frequency. So we can replace it with the frequency FC uh, into. So the equation will become like T on plus FC into I naught, where FC is the switching frequency, I naught is the output current. And T on is the uh, uh, average, uh, T on is the on time, which is actually given three millisecond. So by putting all the values, uh, we get the input current is equal to three ampere. Uh, so uh, what we have to find, we have to find the average source current. So the average source current value is equal to three ampere. Uh, in the next example, uh, in the next example, what we are given actually, we are given that the input voltage is 100 volts, the load resistance is 10 ohm, and the inductor value is 100 milli Henry. The switching frequency is one kilohertz. So switching frequency actually determines how much switching is actually done per, per second, uh, for how much the uh, switch fluctuate between the position one and position two, or for how much time the uh, MOSFET become turns on, and in the second uh, duration, the how, for how much time the divert become turns on. So the on time is 5 millisecond, 0.5 millisecond. So what we have to, if the average current is one ampere, what we have to determine, we have to determine the average load voltage, the output current, the output power, and the minimum value of L required. So uh, first of all, uh, first of all, we calculate the duty cycle. So D is equal to the on time divided by the total time. So the total time is uh, one, uh, total time is one, and the on time is 0.5 millisecond, on, and total time is one millisecond. So from here we get 0.5 or 50%. So it means that for 
half duration or for uh, half duration the MOSFET is turned on and for half duration the diode is turned on. So it means this is the uh, total duty time, a uh, duty cycle for this converter. The first task uh, that we want to uh, find out is the average lo uh, load voltage. So already we know the formula for the bug converter that the average voltage V out is equal to D into V i where D is the duty cycle, VI is the input voltage. So we have already calculated the duty cycle, actually that is equal to 0.5. And the input voltage is given in the statement that is 100 volt. So what we get, we get 50 volts. The second part, part is the output current. So the output current is equal to the input divided by the uh, input current divided by duty cycle. So I is I divided by 0.5. So from here we get two ampere. The third part is the output power. So output power is equal to the output uh, voltage multiplied by the output current. So output voltage is 50 volts already. Uh, we have derived in, uh, in the first part and the output current is derived in the second part that is two ampere. So what we get, we get 100 ampere. And the uh, last one is the minimum value of L required. So, so the minimum value of L required. So for calculation of L, we know the formula L is equal to T of R divided by two. But we but we don't have the value of uh, off time. So first we have to calculate the off time value. So off time already we know that total time is equal to t on plus t off. So t off equal to total time minus t on. So from here we get 0.5 millisecond. Putting all these values in the equation, so t off equal to 0.5 millisecond. Our value is given. The question is that is 100 or uh, 10 ohms and divided by two. So from here we get. 2.5 milli handy. So this is the minimum value of L required for this converter in order to eliminate the ripple. The, its value can be greater than that, but it's the minimum value that is needed in order to eliminate the ripples in the output. Uh, third example, we have uh, a DC bug converter or DC, DC bug chopper that operates a frequency of one kilohertz from a hundred volts DC source Applying a 10 ohm resistor. The inductor component of the load is 50 milli handy. If the, if the average output voltage is 50 milli, uh, 50 volts, find the duty cycle or on time RMS value of the load voltage, the average value of the load current, I max and I, ma I minimum current, and then the input power, peak to peak ripple current, the peak to peak ripple current if the frequency is increased to five kilohertz. And the peak to peak ripple current if the inductance is increased to 50, 250 million here. So uh, if you have converter and uh, if we, uh, so we, we will have ripples at the in the output. The ripples can be plus minus one volt or plus minus uh, plus one volts or minus one volt depend upon the output. So if we increase the output frequency, so the ripples changes actually the value of the ripples or the magnitude of the ripple minimize or maximize, we will you now check that what's, what's the effect on the ripples if we increase the frequency. And if we change the uh, inductors or okay, inductors values, uh, I mean the, uh, the low pass filters components value. So also the ripples can be min uh, minimized. So from the last parts, we will actually check the effect on the uh, ripples. Uh, if we change the frequency or if we change the inductance value. So these are some of the values that we have to find out. So the first thing uh, that we want to calculate is the duty cycle. So from so how can we calculate the duty cycle? So already we know the output uh, voltage or equation for the bug converter that V out is equal to D into V i. Now we know the input voltage is 100 volts, the output voltage is 50 volts. So I simply divide both and we get the duty equal to 0.5 or 50%. Then the total time, so total time already we know we have given the frequency. So T is equal to one over F from here we total time is equal to one millisecond. Now we have to calculate the on time. So D is equal to T on divided by T. So T on is equal to T multiplied by D. So total time is given one millisecond and D is equal to 0.5. So total on time is 50, uh, 0.5 millisecond. Now uh, we know that total time is equal to one millisecond. So 0.5 millisecond, our total time is one millisecond. The on time is 0.5 millisecond. So we can also calculate the off time, that off time is equal to 0.5 millisecond. 
The next thing we have to calculate is the RMS output voltage. So that is actually equal to VI into under root. Okay. So 100 multiply by under root 0.5. So we get 70.7 uh, volts. So that is the RMS output voltage. Then the output current. Seven. So output current, our pass I not. Oh, our pass simply voltage divided by resistance output voltage already we. Uh, 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 that is known to us. That is 50 volts and input resistance is 10. So we get 5 ampere. Then we have to calculate the maximum current and the minimum current. So the maximum current equation is V not divided by R plus V not divided by 2 L P of. Uh, now uh, all the values are given. The volt output voltage value is known. The resistance value is known and the off time value is known. So just putting all the values, we get the maximum current equal to 5.25 ampere. And what we have to do, we have to simply, uh, for max current, we have to simply add the V0 divided by 2 LT off time, and for minimum current, we have to subtract this portion. So we just simply, sub, uh, for the minimum current, the equation will be like that, that we out divide by R minus V out divide by 2 L off so by subtracting this what we get we get the minimum current equal to 4.75 ampere so it means that there are some of the ripple the maximum current that we are achieving all this and the minimum current value is 4.7 ampere then the uh, next part is that what's uh, the average input voltage mm -hmm. so the average input voltage uh, input current is equal to Simply add the maximum current and minimum current multiply by 2 or divide by 2 multiply by total duty uh, time that is 0.5. So we get the average current equal to 2.5 ampere. Then we have to calculate the input power. So the input power is equal to input voltage multiplied by the input uh, current. So input voltage is given 100 volts and the input current average is 2.5. So we get 250 watt. Then the peak to peak ripple. So uh, uh the p to p ripples current so ripples are actually the i max current my i minimum current so the maximum current was 5.25 and the minimum current is 4.75 so if you subtract it we get 0.5 ampere so it means that 0.5 ampere ripples are there in the output yes sir then uh and h Okay, what uh, in the last uh, second last part, uh, the question is if the frequency is increased to 55 kilohertz, uh, what will be the ripples in the outputs? So for that, it means the frequency, uh, the frequency has, uh, has not been changed. In the first, the frequency was one kilohertz. Now the frequency is five kilohertz. So with the change of frequency, the on and the off time changes. So the total time actually, uh, the total time will actually changes. So first we have to calculate the total time. So total time is equal to 200 microsecond. The on time and the off time will be equally divided because one, uh, 100 microsecond will be the on time and 100 microsecond will be the off time. Now already we know the equation. The equation was I max is equal to V naught divided by R plus V naught divided by two LT off. Just putting the values, the new values of the T off in, in the equation. So we get the I maximum current equal to 5.05 ampere. And for same, same equation with subtraction, so we get the minimum current equal to 4.95. So if we subtract the maximum current with the minimum, so we get the peak to peak ripple equal to 0.5. So the large reduction in ripple current as the chopping frequency is increased, in fact, the reduction is the same proportion as increase in the frequency. So what's actually this equation shows? This equation shows that if we increase the switching frequency, the ripples in the output are actually reduced. So with the change, and they are actually directly related that the number of change or the number of uh, increase in the uh, rip, uh, in the switching frequency will actually decrease the number of ripples in the output. So there is, a, there is a large reduction in the ripple. In the first case, the ripples were 0.5 ampere. And in the second case, when the switching frequency is increased to five kilohertz, the ripple uh, in the output are decreased to 0.1 ampere. So this is the effect of the switching frequency. When the switching fre frequency is increased, the number of ripples are actually reduced in the output. Now in the last part, uh, we want to ch check the effect that what's the effect on the, uh, what's the effect on the inductor? If we change the value of inductor to some other value, so what will be its effect on the ripples? So for that, 
the maximum current no equation is already known that the IMAX current from part E that we now divide by R plus we now divide by 2 L P of. Now in the first case, the L value was 5 point, uh, sorry, the L value was 50 um, uh, milli Henry. Now if we change the inductor value to 250 milli Henry, so in this case, you will change the inductor value to 250 milli Henry. So if we change its value, what we will get we will get the current value equal to 5.05. And if we change the, uh, the uh, if we change this value in the I minimum current, we get the minimum current value 4.95. So which, which are actually those values which we, which, we have to which we have derived in the part H. So it means if we change the switching frequency, the ripples are actually reduced. Or if we change the inductor value, the inductor value, if the inductor value is increased, and the switching frequency is same as in the previous, that was one kilohertz. So in this, in both cases, the ripple, uh, the ripple are actually reduced in the output. So this actually shows the effect that with the change of switching frequency, increase in the switching frequency, the ripple all reduced. But if the switching frequency is kept constant and the inductor value is increased, in, in, in this case also the ripples are reduced uh, in the output. Next is uh, a step down chopper operates at a switching frequency of 4 kilohertz from, two, uh, from 25 volt DC source supplying a 5 ohm resistive load if the output voltage is 15 volts and the current is discontinuous. Find. Now there is also another condition the current is discontinuous. So we have already discussed two conditions. One was the CCM mode and the other was DCM mode. Now this is actually the DCM mode. Now the duty cycle, first we have to calculate the duty cycle, the minimum value of L required, the power from the source, the power to the load, the max current and the I minimum current. So these are some of the values that we have to calculate. Now if we look at the statement, the if we calculate the duty cycle, the duty cycle is, now, uh, is not now equally divided. It's actually uh, uh, it, 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 it is actually different uh, from the previous example. So first we have to calculate the output voltage. So output voltage is equal to uh, D divided by V naught. So what is actually D? So D is equal to output voltage is the 15 volt and the input voltage is 25. So we get 0.6. So it means that for half of, so if we, uh, so from this derivation, we can actually know that the total, if the total time is one second, so, so up to 0.6 second, the switch one is on or the MOSFET is turned on. And for 0.4 second, the diode is on or the switch is connected to position two. So in this case, the switch is not actually equally divided to 0.5 or 2.5. So, it, so, it, um, so in this case, it is differently divided. Sir? Yeah. Sir, ye 0 0.6, sir, ye, uh, se kya murad hai, sir, ye mujhe samaj nahi hai, sir, ye D. D, humare paas hooti hai duty cycle. Duty cycle se hum ye pata chalta hai ki humare paas jo switch hai, wo kitna, kitne time ki liye wo switch 1 ke saath connected hai, aur pher wo kitne time ki liye switch 2 ke saath connected hai. So, ye 0 0.6, sir, ye time duration hai. So, 0 0.6 is the on time. So, ye humare paas show karti hai ki jo switch hai, so total time हमारे पास कितनी है वो हमारे पास आ जाती है वो हम अभी कैलकुलेट करेंगे कि टोटल टाइम हमारे पास वो कितनी आती है सो वो टोटल टाइम हमें फॉर एग्जांपल हमारे पास टोटल टाइम आ जाती है 100 सेकंड तो हमें ये पता चल जाता है कि 60 सेकंड के लिए वो स्विच 1 के साथ कनेक्टेड होगा और 40 सेकंड के लिए वो हमारे पास स्विच 2 के साथ कनेक्टेड होगा यस सर लेकिन अगर टाइम हमारे पास आ जाती है 200 तो उसमें हमारे पास फिर वो 120 सेकंड के लिए वो स्विच 1 के साथ कनेक्टेड होगा और 80 सेकंड के लिए हमारे पास वो स्विच 2 के साथ कनेक्ट होगा ये पॉइंट से हम ये रेशो शो करती है ओके इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द इंडक्टर वैल्यू सो व्हाट इज द इंडक्टर वैल्यू फार्मूला इज दैट L इक्वल टू T ऑफ मल्टीप्लाई बाय R डिवाइड बाय 2 वी नो द वैल्यू ऑफ R बट वी डोंट हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ ऑफ टाइम uh, so first of all, we have to calculate the off time. So already we know the value of D, that D equal to T on divided by T, that is equal to 0.6. So from, if we rearrange this equation, uh, so T on equal to T multiplied by 0.6. Now, well, what's the value of T? 
So we don't have the value of T, but we, we have the value of frequency that is actually four kilohertz. So we can also write this equation 0.6 divided by F. So 0.6 divided by four multiplied by 10 to the power three. So we get, actually get 150 microsecond as the on time. So now uh, we calculate the on time. So we can, uh, so total T is equal to T on plus T off. So it means that uh, total time is 250 microsecond. So in this, uh, uh, so total time is 250 microsecond. So in, in this total time for 150 microsecond, the switch is connected to position one and for 100 microsecond, the switch is connected to position two or for 150 microsecond, the MOSFET is turned on and for 100 microsecond, the diode is actually turned on. Now uh, we have the value of off time. So by putting uh, this value in the L equation, we get the inductor value equal to 0.25 milli Henry. So this is the value of inductor that is required uh, for the uh, low pass filter. Uh, in the next, we have to calculate the average source current. So input equal to output divide, uh, output current multiplied by the D. We have the value of D, but we don't have the value of the output current. So output current, but we have the value of output voltage and the resistor. So output voltage divided by R equal to three ampere by putting these values, we get the input current equal to 1.8 ampere. And uh, the input power is equal to the input voltage divided by multiplied by the input current. The input power was given in the statement that is 25 volt and the input current is derived. So that is 1.8. So total power is 45 watts. The power supplied to the load, so that is that can also be calculated by I square R or V square by R. So output power is given, uh, output voltage is derived. So that is actually 15 volt and divided by R. So we get 45 watt. So the input power and the output power in this is same in this uh, case. So uh, the next uh, thing uh, the, uh, that, uh, that is going to be calculated, that is the maximum current and the minimum current. But the statement was given that the current is discontinuous. So maximum current value already equation that input uh, current plus uh, T off V naught divided by two L. So output voltage is given inductor values calculated off time is given. So total by putting all the values, we get the maximum current equal to six ampere. The minimum current, same equation, but with subtraction of T off V naught divided by two L. So by putting all these values, we get the minimum current equal to three ampere, uh, zero ampere. So if we if we look at the maximum current that is six ampere, but the minimum current is zero ampere. So it means that the current actually in the the, uh, the current cycle actually increases and decreases to zero. So it means the current is discontinuous. It's not continuous. So when whenever the current approaches to zero, the current becomes discontinuous. But whenever the current value is greater than zero, the current will be continuous in that case. Now coming toward the buck current. Uh, current agar zero se uh, matlab kam hota, matlab, uh, negative mein hota, pir continuous pir bhi hota, sir. Nahin, current jab bhi zero ki taraf approach karega ya zero se uski value kam aayegi, to wo hamare paas, hum ye kehte ki hamare paas jo circuit hai, converter hai, wo discontinuous mode mein kaam kar raha hai. Lekin jab bhi hamare paas circuit ki jo output current jab bhi wo zero se greater hogi, jis tarah in the previous lecture mein aapko wo form dikhaye the, Okay, for example, wo, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continuous. So, wo continuous yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Okay. So, the next example is uh, no, uh, these are some of, some of the example on boost converter. A step up chopper uh, as shown uh, operates a frequency of one kilohertz. The source voltage is 100 volts DC. The load resistance is 2 ohm. The average value of the load current is 100 ampere. Find the power dissipated by the load, the duty cycle, the average source current, and the average value of the switching current, switch current. So first of all, we have to calculate the power. So power is equal to I square R. So we know the output current that is 100 ampere. So 100 square into R. So R, uh, R, R value is equal to two ohm. So we get a power output of 20 kilowatts. Next, the equation for the output power output voltage is v, v out is equal to V divided by one minus D. So the average output volta uh, voltage can be obtained from T squared equal to V naught squared divided by R. 
So we have calculated the output power. That is actually 20 kilowatt. We know the value of R. So we can find the value of V, output voltage. So from here, we get the output voltage equal to 200 volts. So in the question, the input voltage was 100 volts and the output voltage is 200 volts. So we can actually uh, we can actually determine the value of D that the D value is actually equal to 0.5. Or we can also determine through its uh, through an equation that one uh, which equation this equation uh, v not equal to vi one divided by one minus d. So putting the output voltage, the input voltage, we can find out the unknown d value. So by putting all these value, we calculate the dv d value equal to 0.5. So show it shows that uh, half of the duration the switch one is connected for half of the duration switch two is connected. The power input is pi is equal to vi multiplied by input current. So uh, so input current is equal to pi divided by vi. So if we neglect all the losses, actually there are uh, minimum or one to two percent losses in an ideal, uh, in a in a boost in a converter in any converter is uh, why? Because uh, uh, there are switching devices that are actually semiconductor devices. So their losses are almost equal to zero. Then there is a low pass filter, uh, which consists of the components, inductor and capacitor. So they are storage devices. So the, their power dissipation is zero. So ideally, 0% losses and practically 1% to 2% losses are there in the output. So we can actually, uh, so we can actually neglect these losses. And we, uh, we can also state that the input power is equal to the output power. That is actually 20 kilowatts. Already we have uh, discussed this case in the first lecture where that why uh, its efficiency is high and why the losses are being neglected. So the input current is actually you know, uh, power pi divided by the output voltage. So the input current is 200 ampere. The next is the average diode current is the same as the average load current since the average capacitor current is zero. So ID is equal to I naught that is actually equal to 100 ampere. So the current through the switch can be found by the equation that input current multiplied equal to I switch plus ID or the switch current is equal to input current minus diode current. So the input current is 200 ampere, the diode current is 100 ampere. So the switch current is actually equal to 100 ampere. So it's, an, uh, it's an another example on the boost converter that the step up chopper shown uh, supplies the power to 220 ohm uh, resistor load at 120 volts. The source voltage is 40 volts DC. The load inductance is 2.2 milli Henry. If the chopping uh, chopper frequency is 4 kilohertz, find the duty cycle, the average value of the source current, T on, I max, I min, and the uh, average value of the diode current. So first of all, you have to calculate the duty cycle via uh, the input current is known, the output current is uh, output voltage and the input voltages are known. So from here, we calculate the D equal to 0.67. The next is the input current. So input current by putting uh, the value in this equation, we get 18.4 uh, ampere. Uh, then the on time is 165 microsecond. I max current is 35.2 ampere. The minimum current is uh, 1.6 ampere. And the average diode current is the same as the average load current since the average capacitor current is zero. So it means that ID is equal to I naught and this is equal to 6 ampere. Why we are considering this case that average capacitor current is zero because when the capacitor operates in the steady state, the current the, uh, the current through it is zero. So the next example is on bug boost converter. Uh, so bug boost is another type of converter that actually step up and step, up, step down both the DC voltages. So it's operate, um, supply the power to a load having a resistance of 1.5 ohm and inductance of 0.8 milli Henry. The, average, the source voltage is 50 volts DC and the load voltage is 75 volts. If the on time is 1.5 millisecond, find the chopping frequency, maximum current, minimum current, input current, divert current, peak to peak ripple in the input current, the minimum inductance required for continuous current operation. So equation for the, the output equation for the bug boost converter is V out is equal to VID divided by one minus D. 
by putting the values of input voltage and output voltage, we get the duty cycle equal to 0 0.6. And by if you if you calculate if you want to calculate the switching frequency, so we know that the D is equal to T on divided by T that is equal to 0 0.06. So T can be equal to the on time uh, 1.5. Uh, the on time is given the question that is 1.5 millisecond divided by 0.6. So total T is equal to 2.5 millisecond. By taking its uh, reciprocal, we can calculate the switching frequency that is actually equal to 400 hertz. Then the maximum current, so putting the values in the equation, we get the maximum current equal to 144 ampere. The minimum current with subtraction, we get the values of 78 ampere. The average value can be the maximum current plus minimum current divided by 2 multiplied by D. So we get the average current is equal to 66 ampere. The average value of divert current, so ID is equal to I naught. So what is I naught? I naught is the equal to output voltage divided by resistance. So we get the uh, average, uh, we get the output current equal to 50 ampere. Then the peak to peak ripple, so the maximum current minus minimum current. So if you subtract it, so the uh, ripples in the output current is actually equal to 66 ampere. And in the last part, what we have to calculate, we have to calculate the minimum inductor value. So the minimum inductor value is L is equal to R T D one minus D whole square divided by two. We have the value of T R and D. By putting all these values, we get the value of inductor equal to equal to 180 micro Henry. So this is the minimum uh, inductor value that is required for uh, for this converter in order to operate it in continuous mode. If we increase the inductor value then 180 micro Henry, the output current will will approach to zero and the circuit will operate in a DCM mode then. 